Peter Lewis, who is the head teacher of Ashley Hill Primary School, which is celebrating its 50th year. So how long have you been head teacher here now? So this is my sixth year at Ashley Hill, started in 2016. But you've been at Ashley Hill before? That's right, I did, uh, as, a, as a newly qualified teacher back in 2005, I did two years um, up in year five and six. Yeah, uh, I think I vaguely remember you coming here, actually. Yeah, I think you were in my first class, Sam. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure it was a delight, wasn't it? Absolute delight, Sam, absolutely, yeah, we we'll speak very highly of you. Um, and um, uh, I remember your dad uh, was my very first uh, parents' evening meeting, uh, which I, I met with great trepidation, as any newly qualified teacher would. Yeah, I, um, I'm not, yeah, it'd be interesting to look back on how some of my school boards were. They'd probably be the exact same as they are now. It talks too much and doesn't listen. But, um, so, just in terms of this year, obviously, is 50th year in school. Indeed, yeah. And what sort of stuff have you got on this year to celebrate that? So lots of things, lots of things to celebrate. Obviously, it's an important, important uh, 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 anniversary for the school. Um, we've got a big um, uh, sports day event uh, that we're looking to run on the 30th of May. Uh, that'll include um, uh, inviting um, alumni, old, old, uh, old pupils who, who uh, came to Ashley Hill. Um, and we're also going to kind of join it up with um, uh, the Jubilee. Uh, it lands in the same week that we've got the, the two bank holidays. So we're going to try and um, uh, cover a lot of bases uh, with uh, the Jubilee, the 50th anniversary of the school and our sports day. So it's going to be quite a novelty based, lots of events, um, corgi races for the Queen. Um, uh, so lots of things Where going on. Where have you got that from? Uh, fake corgis, not real oh, corgis, right. yeah. So, yeah. so that, that, I'm not entirely sure you're allowed to run dog racing. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. <laughs> so just in terms of have you sort of looked into the history a bit of it all then, since obviously we've been such a year, you've been doing bits and pieces about the history of the school, have you been sort of, sort of surprised at how it's grown in the way? Because when it first started, it wasn't a massive school, and now it's quite, well, it was big when I was here, it's got bigger. Yeah, no, as a lot of people are aware, you know, I think uh, the school was built because of the, the pressures that were brought about by the Birchill Estate, uh, and the fact that um, Onkin School couldn't cope with the amount of children in the catchment, and obviously Conkerberry uh, in, in, in more recent years as well. Um, and it's grown and grown and grown, really. Um, uh, we've also got a mobile classroom as well, which is now utilised by, by Hopes and Dreams Nursery, uh, and that provides a nice uh, feeder into, into the school as well. Um, but yeah, um, I suppose the biggest things that have grown are our kind of outdoor um, provision that we, we put on and, and the fact that um, you know, we've got lots of space that we can utilise and, and, and make, make the most of. Yeah, because when I was here, it was sort of, we had the fields and they were, it had to be like borderline sort of hedge fire dry before you could go near the things. Yeah. You've embraced a very different attitude now. You've got chickens, you've got <laughs> wild, this is a wild thing down the bottom. Yeah. Uh, forest. Forest uh, school down the bottom, yeah, yeah. So uh, just in terms of that, how, I mean, obviously Ashley Hill is fairly unique. Into, I mean, the island schools do tend to have a feel, but Ashley Hill's got an abundance of room. Yeah, we're very lucky. Just how great is that in terms of what you're able to offer for students uh, increasing learning outside of classrooms? Just fantastic. Uh, I mean, um, I say, yeah, the amount of space, not only at the down the forest school, but at the top as well. We've also got top playground, but also a field space. Um, one of the local football clubs as well has, has worked with us to provide um, some football goals. Um, so we utilise that space as much as we possibly can. Down the bottom, as you say, uh, we've got a forest school. Um, uh, down there, we've invested quite a bit of money into the into the forest area. So there's a, a base camp area. There's um, kind of rope swings. Um, there's there's loads going on there whereby we can. Um, have education in the outdoors, um, lots of collaboration, lots of teamwork, um, lots of um, learning how to, how, to, how, to, how to learn in nature. Um, and um, we also have the, have the log cabin, which again we invested in about five or six years ago, uh, which was also our base and we have lots of resources in there from fire lighting equipment, um, marshmallows to put on the fires, all sorts of things. So it's, yeah. So just on, where did the chicken idea come from? Because that's sort of like a it's it's like curiosity, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's, um, it's it's thinking about life cycle as well, and and, um, and nature, and looking after things, and taking good care of things, seeing how things grow. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Debbie Carcass, um, who is currently one of our reception teachers, um, it, it's it's quite inspirational actually when it comes to all things outdoors. Um, she's led a lot of uh, our um, training in uh, forest school, but also uh, enjoys coming to me with a. Um, an idea and uh, often when she comes to me I'll often say yes 
Um, and one of the ideas was, was, about, was uh, bringing chickens into the school and seeing them hatch, seeing put them in incubators, seeing how they get looked after and so on. And I always seem to miss them, but you also have a school dog. We do, Asher. Yes, Asher's a big uh, big part of the school. Um, the children love um, spending time with Asher. Asher loves being in the school, uh, but he's got a day off today. I always seem to book these days off. I need to start thinking about this more. <laughs> um, so just going back to the 50th year, something in terms of when you look back at you, what was, is there anything that has really stuck out for you or surprised you a little bit along the history of the school? I suppose it's coming back and see it for, from my perspective, uh, coming in as a uh, rather naive uh, NQT, newly qualified teacher back in 2005, to then uh, leading the school and being the head of the school. Obviously, uh, um, I think there's been a significant change in, in, in that period of time, largely with the, our use of the outdoors, but also our, our recognition of um, the, the, the children's dispositions to, to, to learn certain certain skills outside of your normal classroom-based um, activities from, so I'm, what I'm talking about there is our learning powers uh, um, and, and the, the kind of learning dispositions. Um, so thinking about how how we can prepare children for high school and for learning throughout their life as opposed to just learning, let's say, uh, maths on a Tuesday afternoon in year five, uh, thinking a bit about it a bit more broadly than that. Just in terms of Ashley Hill sort of growing with Onkin as well, but you've got Onkin Private School down the bottom, like we have got Tonkaberry over the way as well. But just in terms of the village, how have you felt sort of any times as head that the sort of link between the schools and wider community groups has sort of grown? Or do you think that's something that has grown in the time you've been here? And... Uh, I'd like to think so. I think obviously the community is an enormous part of, 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 of children's learning. Yeah, we need to be embracing everything that, uh, that there is in the community from, from, from Cub Scouts to um, to sports clubs uh, and I think we've done our very best to work very closely with um, all areas of the community um, to bring the best out of, out of the school um, but we work really closely with, with Onkin School um, you know in terms of remembrance services um, working um, with um, how else do we work with Onkin working um, Beating them football every year. No, we don't actually. Well, we, we don't. Used to. No, no. Standards have slipped. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, we need to we need to up our game there. Um, but yeah, just just working working with really, uh, our junior commissioners. So um, you know the junior commissioners and um, and the remembrance services are when the schools really uh, get together and bring the best out of out of the schools within the community. And just so finally, obviously it goes into fifty years. Fifty years is always a time when people start looking back a little bit. But obviously, your role you've always got to look forward. What more would you like to do, sort of, just in terms of, you know, you've got the outdoor space that you use. Is there anything else that you're looking at going, all right, let's be able to do that and do this and just expand on that a little bit in the next couple, two, three years? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's always thinking about kind of the positives of the school and, and, and adding to the positives. So we've got a lot more kind of ideas um, for, for the outdoors. We've just um, developed a, a kind of um, a memorial spot for a member of staff that sadly, uh, sadly died last year, uh, which is going to be kind of a not just a memorial, but also a mindfulness area for the children, an outside library space, a chance for the children to just kind of relax and be, be mindful. Um, uh, sometimes uh, one of the, one of our big learning powers is about readiness to learn, and we find that um, more often than not, when a child struggles in the class, it's because they're not ready to uh, kind of attack their learning. So that's going to be a really nice spot we feel for the children and also for the staff. Uh, we've got a lovely little willow archway going up outside as well. So again, we're trying to um, think about the, the the positives that we've already had, but add to them. Um, and again, I think it's also in the um, uh, the, the aftermath, let's say, of, of, of COVID and coming back after two rather disrupted years, trying to make sure that there's plenty of consistency and um, that we are, you know, sympathetic to the to the children's needs, but also aware that they, they they've really um, desired this kind of need for routine and structure uh, that we're trying to kind of continue with as we come back.